Hi folks, welcome to part six of our fixture recap series. In this video, we're gonna walk through nine different custom fixtures that we have built over the years in hopes that it serves as an educational tool or an inspiration when you're just trying to figure out what's the best way or what's the right way to hold on to something and make that part. In this first one, back in widget 168, we machined a custom fixture for the second operation on these micarta knife handles. There's just no other way you can do it. We did op one in a traditional vise, but op two needed a custom fixture. And once you machine that fixture, it proves out to be a great workflow, whether we're making two, like we did here, or whether you're making 200 of them. In widget 256, we made some parts for a local aviation history museum relatively thin parts. We used some vice edge clamps to hold down the raw material for op one, drilled out enough holes so we could then screw clamp that material down to the fixture below it, and then finish out all the profile work for the four parts. Relatively easy with a very high degree of process reliability and the ability to continue to tweak this as needed before removing the parts from the fixture. Widget 163 was part two of machining a casting pattern that we then sent off to have cast into a cover for a South Bend lathe. And because it's very common to see draft angles or tapers along casting patterns, that meant we had to think or get creative about how to hold this. So we started off op one with a vacuum work holding plate. That did great for the majority of the material removal. We then flipped the part over and used a combination of alignment blocks and the Mighty Bite eccentric hex clamps along with some shims and a Saunders Machine Works fixture plate to hold it for the final operation. The hat top on the part meant we didn't have easy access to check the alignment, but getting a little creative with an indicator at an angle solved that problem. Widget 111, we had this piece of, I believe it was an extrusion that the customer sent us and they needed a significant amount of material removal done to it. And there was just no obvious way to grab onto this part. So what do we do? We build a custom fixture. We use Mighty Bite hex clamps along the interior diameter. And then we machined spacer blocks to fit along the profile of the part to stabilize it combined with the existing screw holes and fasteners to secure it down. The Mighty Bite hex clamps kept the part from shifting on us and the fasteners in conjunction with those spacer blocks provided the majority of the actual work holding. We held that in a pair of vices and that let us get the job done. Machining a connecting rod, or more specifically the OP2 for this V8 engine project. Alex did a great job on this on Wednesday widget 219. He built this fixture that allowed him to machine a number of these connecting rods in the OP2 setup. And in this video, he walks through the CAD, the CAM design, and how it worked to hold the con rods for OP2. Widget 223, we got a phone call from Jimmy DeResta. He needed help building out a workflow that would let him use his Tormach to machine a bevel onto these giant razor blades that he made. And so this is the first time in this series where we pulled out the 3D printer. At the time we had a marked forge FDM printer. We designed and machined a fixture along with some pivoting strap clamps that would allow Jimmy to drop a giant razor blade into this fixture and machine the end as needed and flip it over and continue as such. In the video, we walk through not only how we designed the fixture, but how we included a datum that Jimmy could use to probe off of to find his work coordinate system when he put this fixture on his machine. Back in Fusion Friday 123, we needed a way of holding this curved piece for the final operation. We could hold it in a traditional vise, but we didn't have a good way of accurately locating it. We laser cut this jig, you could also 3D print it, and that gave us a datum that we could probe off of and the confidence to know that when we drop this part in the vise, we could have it accurately located to machine that final operation. Widget 184 focuses on backside chamfering tools. What different tools you can use, how to program them, speeds and feeds, and other tips and tricks. Now this isn't technically a custom fixture, but anytime you're doing custom fixturing, there's often an emphasis on doing everything you can to get the part done without additional setups. And backside chamfering is often a key to consolidating those operations and getting a part done in one setup. And finally, Widget 160, one of my favorite examples of a custom fixture plate where we designed a fixture plate that would drop into a traditional six inch vise to machine a KTM motorcycle bracket. The video walks through how we handle the back side of the fixture as well as the top side, giving us not only the correct work holding strategies, but also information to remind whoever's running this fixture, the information that they need to know, whether it's the datums or even the file name or the date and ensure process reliability every time you use this fixture. 
card here to the NYC CNT page with all of these videos, as well as the other videos from our 10 part fixturing recap series. Otherwise folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.